How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and do a contract. I'm starting off on the Heartlands, but I'm going to be driving to the Institute map and then to Harvest Court. Uh, it's called Down to the Last Screw. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, it's after I've done this contract, I've then got one more to do and I can lock the, uh, the garage in Harvest Court. And uh, yeah, I'm setting off at Heartlands just because I sort of start the missions at a, um, a garage. Got to fly along here. Cut across those islands and uh, go to the Institute map. And then once I'm there, I'm gonna uh, yeah pop out of that gateway. I've got to head up to the top corner. And again, I don't know what this game's uh, this phase. It's loving the old uh, loaf scattered around the place. Uh, grab a loaf from there though. Take it to that technical station or something. And then the second part of the mission, or part two, because there are three, is grab a TUZ-166 from there, just south of the same place, and then take that back there. And then the third part of this mission, um, it says you've got to get three vehicle spare parts, and then take them to what will eventually be the garage uh, in Harvest Corp. But again. The way it's broke this mission down, it's not very clear because, as you can see in like the top right corner, there's a uh, stage one. So I've got to grab the loaf. Once you do that, then you get stage two, which is the TUZ. So I wasn't really too sure what was going to happen with the uh, the vehicle spare parts, whether they were going to appear once I'd uh, delivered the other vehicles, or I think it's the near the train yard down in Crossroads. Uh, there's a factory just near there that's got vehicle spare parts. I wasn't sure if I was going to have to drive all the way down there and get them and do it that way. Um, yeah, to let you know, it's three lots of vehicle spare parts appear at the like the technical station where I've got to go and drop. I think it's called the technical station where I've got to go and drop this uh, loaf off and the TUZ one six six. So. Uh, yeah, basically, you could do with a crane, really. And I I just wasn't sure at the time. Uh, I was going through different vehicles. I'd sort of realised I've not really used the uh, twin steer for a good little while. So, it, uh, yeah, it was just sort of a good excuse to crack that out. I was able to... I wanted to obviously take a loaf from me. He's goddamn professional. Always saves me bacon. Um, but I've got to, yeah, collect a couple of vehicles. And uh, I also wanted room for the cargo, the last bit of the mission. And, I mean, I could have taken another vehicle, but I would have had to have gone, like, north on this Heartlands map, go to the trailer store there, or... Yeah, probably that, really. I suppose I could have started from Crossroads, but, again, I'm still going to have to go, like, across the map and get a trailer, so... Yeah, this was the only vehicle, as of three vehicle spare parts I need. Uh, just, like, a simple sideboard wouldn't do it. And, to be fair... I've done it plenty of times before. I could have just got a sideboard and a crane and sort of loaded two in the back and then uh, worn like the last piece of cargo as a hat or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, just as an excuse to uh, get this twin stair out, really. And uh, I was trying to be a little bit careful at first. Well, most of the time I drive the twin stair. It's uh, Fox's mod version on like when I'm just usually doing a live stream and playing with mods. Um, and yeah, that's much better. It's weighted a lot lower down so it doesn't tip as much or anything. This is obviously the in-game vanilla one, so... I always get a little bit cautious at first, just kind of tiptoeing my way through the map. I also didn't want to uh, completely delete the suspension and everything too quick, which from the looks of it, yeah, I've already wiped half of that out. <laughs> it doesn't take long. But again, it's one of them where the vehicles that build up speed quicker are just inevitably going to take more speed damage. And uh, one thing I've always liked about this twin set was a couple of things, quite a few things really, in fact. Um, when we first got this vehicle, it was only rear-wheel drive. And it was still not bad even then, but since then, on Imandra, I think it was, um, they added all-wheel drive for this vehicle. So, yeah, it helps a lot, just because when you plough through certain sections like that, for example, the body boggy mud, um, this thing always had enough power to kind of smash the front end of the truck through the rough piece of terrain and then yeah you'd have the back to claw your way out but if you got like certain longer sections of boggy mud it uh it just catch you out yeah it you could only uh use the power to kind of get away with so much uh another thing i like about it is even though it's an american vehicle they've actually got like the mud tires on it which most american vehicles don't there's a few exceptions this being one uh the a and k like the military 
truck. Well, I suppose probably the ANK civilian version, as I, I believe, got muds as well. But yeah, there's really not many at all, so uh, that's nice. Even with the chained version as well, it's the chained version of the muds, not like the all-terrain tyres or whatever they are. Uh, another thing I like about this is, even considering like the size of the tyres and the size of the truck and all the rest of it, uh, it's still got a high-range gearbox, so you can choose between the high-range and the off-road. You're not it's not like this special and advanced special which uh, yeah I've always liked for the speed because like I said when you actually you're driving along and you stick this thing in high gear it just has a really nice like whoosh of power so I managed to uh, get here pretty quick this first bit of the mission done going over to the Institute map and then yeah not going to use the road cut along there over that uh, river section cut through the trees <laughs> in a little shortcut grab myself as a goddamn horse and then wiggle along the road to there um yeah so but yeah back to this vehicle is uh with the gearbox i just i prefer the uh the high range it suits this really well and because the tires are pretty big i think they're 63 odd inch or something I think they're about the biggest tyres you can get on a truck in the game where you're still allowed like the high range gearbox. Um, and because of that, I've said it before, I think they're all roughly geared in the same way as in like a, the bigger the tyre, the faster you go because in high gear, say it's one revolution of the tyre per second, it's probably quicker than that, but um, yeah, the bigger the tyre, just the further you travel on one revolution of that tyre, so because this thing has got big tyres, it just gets up to speed really well. Uh, the only drawbacks about this, which it can be quite a major one, is it's not too bad. Like driving along now, you can see it's not that tippy or anything. But it's one of them where once you start leaning, it doesn't take a whole lot, and then then it'll just go, and uh, yeah, it can catch you out. I suppose this is another thing as well. You can get beached in the middle of it, which is inherent with a vehicle. It's not the end of the world. Overall, it's uh, yeah, still a good one to whip out every now and then. <laughs> That's what she said, of course to use a bit of winch to uh, escape that bit. I've actually got a version of this truck because um, to put the biggest tyres on it you have to raise the suspension but uh, oh man it must have been I don't know probably a good year and a half or to go now maybe even more. Um, there was like a little bug when they updated one of the phases when they added uh, a new phase where you could still put the largest tyres on but you didn't have to equip like the top suspension or you're able to once you put the tires on you're able to go back to the normal suspension I can't remember how it worked now but long story short I've um, I've got a version of this truck where I'm still on the normal suspension so it sits lower but I've got the biggest tires which does help with tipping a little bit to be fair I probably should have uh, gone through my garage list really and tried to find out I know I have uh, still got it and it's one of them if I ever go and equip like raised suspension on it the bug's sort of over now, so I can't remember how it. There was a way of like tricking the system so you could get it to do that way. I can't remember how it was now, but yeah, that's a uh, technically a bit of a rare vehicle, really, because the bug doesn't exist any longer. Although I think for the most part, it certainly doesn't make a difference because I've drove them kind of side by side I've got a, another one back then that was like actually had the raised suspension um, yeah it did make a difference but overall I'd say this vehicle is still a bit prone to tipping really its weight just sits pretty high I've got a feeling a lot of its weight kind of sits along the big slab like flatbed thing at the back um, but I'm sure there's a bit of weight further up front kind of higher in the cab And this is a pretty good candidate for a vehicle really that it could do with like a bit of an overhaul on what it can and can't do like it's not really got any add-ons on the back which is a bit of a shame because there's certainly enough room to fit like a crane um, yeah just all sorts of things like uh, even yeah make it so it's able to be a sideboard and all the rest of it uh, they've never done it funnily enough I've seen a mod recently that is actually I believe makes it work but you can see that square plate near the back of the, uh, the flatbed on the Western Star. Uh, in real life that folds out and it becomes a saddle low and uh, yeah I did see the other day in fact I might actually grab the mod maybe. Um, yeah someone's made it so that actually works now but they should have always done that on this game I'm amazed they didn't really because 
It'd be one of them simple things. You just end up with the saddle low. We've got the trailers for it, but uh, it's just a pretty cool idea how it folds out like that. But yeah, at the very least, they could let us actually tow trailers like attached to the vehicle, not just doing it with a winch. Um, yeah, there though, at this tree, there's a, a little goddamn professional needs rescuing. Again, you can tell it ain't one of mine because it's not got his uh, mushroom snorkel. Not got his roof rack, not got his mud tyres, but I'm assuming not raised suspension either. He's a loaf in need of training. Bring dead trees all over the map. Well, I've got to say, compared to back in the day, they've nerfed everything overall, I think. And I also think this map plays a certain part in it, but, um,. Yeah, this thing doesn't wind up in high gear like it used to. There's a few things that have taken the edge off. But again, because it's all relatively speaking, it all everything still kind of sits in the same order. But yeah, everything's just missing missing that uh, last few percent really. Like the Tager again. When I was having to edit some videos recently to uh, remove like music bits and all that sort of stuff. I uh, yeah seen a, a bit with the Tager. Funnily enough, I did, the bit I did with the Tager, I think it might have been on like the Dolphin review or something. I had the Russian National Anthem thing on it, but <laughs> thankfully that was one of the few things that didn't get copyrighted. Cause it, I believe either because it's a National Anthem or it's the song's over like 99 years old or something, so it never actually uh, moaned at me about that one. So you can see now though in high gear you get a nice pace leaning a little bit there but again I don't think this is insane it's certainly not one of the most most tippy vehicles in the game certainly uh, driven a lot worse but to be fair as well I suppose if it was able to have various add-ons like uh, imagine a small crane on this would be a uh, pretty cool and pretty useful or again like driven various uh, mod versions like they've got loads of add-ons that you can add to it but yeah I suppose as well though that would make that would raise the centre of gravity a bit, make it a bit tippier. be pretty cool if we could get one of them as well, a big digger. Just teasing us by leaving it in the road. So you can get the old loaf on that. You know, especially through these lanes, like these boggy sections, this is where this vehicle does still motor along pretty well. Because the tyres are so big, like I said, just the way the game's been scaled for like vehicles with smaller tyres are inherently going to struggle. But they've not scaled the game to, you know, where 200 inch tyres are going to struggle or whatever. So just when you're on like, especially over sort of mid 50 inch tyres, uh, it rolls over the terrain pretty well. And a lot of these lanes, particularly on this phase, which again, I quite like, it feels pretty organic. Uh, it's better than just doing death mud, but it looks like you're only driving through an inch of mud. Um, yeah, just this vehicle like rolls over stuff pretty well. Rather than it having to wade through it, it just kind of drives over it instead. And especially one nice thing as well is when they did the uh, all-wheel drive, I was worried it was going to like have to split the power so much to feed all the axles that it was going to make the engine feel pretty weak. But overall, it uh, still felt about the same. Like I said, other than they appear to have like slightly reduced everything. It's always been a bit of a beast for a turning like that. Not really, again, it was Justin Lynch saying the other day, and he's not wrong, like, this, it's not terrible. The turning circle is relatively not great. Like, if you've got a normal sized truck, it's going to turn a hell of a lot better than this. But considering the size of the vehicle, if you scaled it up, it's not that bad. But uh, that big, like, plate that goes around the front of the cab is just like, yeah, an absolute angled hitbox that you just clip everything. But anyway, get it as soon as the loaf touches the box, <laughs> that's what she said. Um, yeah, it takes it off you, sadly, we don't get a free loaf. And then, like I say, just got to go south of, uh, of this place. Thankfully, as well, I'm pretty certain you'd get this mission I'm about to mention done before this one, but I've got the uh, like truck repair square and the refueler square thing unlocked here, so... At least once I get there, I can uh, get all fixed up and everything. Don't have to use me a uh, roof rack on my loaf yet. <laughs> it's one of them. I, always, I mean, I always take a loaf of me because 
It's a good time. He saves me bacon. He's always uh, handy in some way or other. But yeah. And then I try my very best <laughs> not to have to use any of the supplies that are on him. Get too keen on keeping him as a as a fully uh, loaded loaf, ready to go. So soon got a bit bored of those uh, ditches going on. Use the grass to skirt around. And this river section coming up, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you follow the road as you're going along here, you'll see now it's like a trap. You're best off going this direction, going right around that rock that I'm just passing now. It was looking all fine here and I was even thinking, oh, maybe it's uh, just going to be good, let me go, and then suddenly, yeah. I think a combination of, like, it dips down to the left, but then the uh, the river current's pretty strong in that section as well. And as soon as that gets you, you tip. But you can see, goddamn professional. He's wiggling, he's jiggling. And even though I've got a, uh, a twin steer kind of getting pushed by the current or wedging against me, the loaf shoves them out of the way. Engine stalled. If it ain't starting, you ain't turning the key hard enough. Wiggles his way back to his wheels. <laughs> that is step one. Now in terms of just flipping the twin stair, I've flipped it plenty of times before with a loaf. I wasn't uh, too worried about that. I just need to go and find somewhere, dig myself a little loaf hole. But this twin stair is a bit of a pain in the ass to tip back to its wheels, and this is where I reckon. The majority of the weight is at least sitting higher than the tyres, it doesn't really have the weight in the tyres. Um, but yeah, I also, I'm just convinced that there's like a slab of weight, say on the roof of the vehicle, that really does kind of like lean over the centre point and doesn't want to make it flip. Because you'd think as well, especially that I'm pulling it against the current, that the current would kind of catch the bottom half of the twin stair and rotate it around. But yeah, you need to kind of catch it on rocks really. But you can see though, the goddamn horse, he dug a little loaf hole. It was actually yeah, pulling the twin steer against the current. And I edited a big chunk out here. I, I pretty much dragged it over to these trees, back to the river. And then I found these rocks like, that I was sort of wedged on a few minutes prior. So I drove up to this tree. And uh, yeah, kind of it's the back end. If you can get the back end caught on something, it won't um, keep trying to rotate around towards you. Was goddamn professional. Still got his 100% rescue record. Saved me bacon, saved me having to recover, which, see on a map like this, I'm on the Institute map, it's one of the only ones that's, or it will soon to be, the only one that uh, I've not got a garage on, so at that point, if I didn't have the loaf with me, I'd either have to recover, load back to Heartlands and drive all the way back here, or well, I could find another vehicle on the map I probably left. Otherwise, yeah, just go back to Heartlands, get another vehicle to bring out as a rescue vehicle. And then I wanted to get the loaf back on the twin stair. If you reverse against the tyres, I've just I've figured it out before. <laughs> Again, he's a goddamn horse of a vehicle. He knows his way around. Uh, yeah, it can flick the back end up. And then I stuck a winch to the twin stair. That drove forward. Lined me up for the, uh, the flatbed at the back. Winch to a tree, got up there. I just left this bit in because we were talking about uh, those immovable trees in the live stream the other day. And yeah, you can see, like, if you pull on the tree hard enough, it'll lift up in the air, but, like, the root section is just planted in the ground, and yeah, it's immovable. And they're pretty brutal on this phase. A bit too brutal for my liking. Yeah, I suppose they're handy, like, you know, when you do need to winch to them, but more often than not, they're the things that are causing me to tip or get stuck, so. I'd say they catch me out more than they help me out. But yeah, it was a pretty short drive, and uh, I don't even know why. I started to turn and ran over it. Hit that, and I tipped. Like, goddamn sons of bitches. Only a minute or two after I'd just done the last rescue. Uh, I've edited most of this out, but again, just to show you. The goddamn horse, he's not even got an autonomous winch. He's got the advanced winch at the minute as well, but he wiggles his way back to his wheels. And uh, yeah, using like the 
TUZ166, this twin steer didn't have too much choice but to actually flip to its wheels instead of just skidding around the map sideways. And uh, again, did the sort of reversing into the wheels trick, got the loaf back up there, and we're good to go. So, not very far to travel, but I've got to uh, get back over this river, which I'll show you what I think is a bit of a better route. So you can see now, this thing definitely used to uh, wind up into high gear a little bit quicker, but it's not the end of the world. Once you are in high gear, you can see again it got a nice whoosh of power, and we're off. I mean, one nice thing about this vehicle, even though the weight isn't as greatly distributed as I'd like, it has actually got some weight to it, so... It does feel like you're driving an actual truck, not like some plastic toy that uh, doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, so you can see like the river, the road section crossing is kind of 20, 30, 40 foot back down the river. I kind of go a bit wide and then drive diagonal with the current because, yeah, the current is pretty strong here. I was surprised. I mean, this truck was crossing fine, but it's a little bit slow to cross that. I thought it uh, would have bit into the ground a little more. Saying that, actually, the front of the twin steer does float, doesn't it? So maybe that was, maybe it was uh, getting its float on a little bit there. But either way, it crossed, got the job done. Like I say, go with the current diagonally, and then that's not really an issue for tipping you, sort of, if anything. Even if you were theoretically going to struggle to cross the river in a truck, say if you've got a truck that floats really badly, just if you go diagonally with the current, it's kind of going to carry you across that way anyway. And you can tell by now, I was... Uh, I wasn't like mad by this point or anything like that, but I'd uh, run out of patience. <laughs> I was pretty happy with that. Managed to use this little TUZ like a wrecking ball, kill a tree. Snagged it on one of those uh, immovable trees, but it bounced out of the way. Hopefully, whoever wants this TUZ doesn't want it back in one piece. It's not my problem. Low morph deliverers. And then you'll see now, as soon as that vehicle touches the square, that's that stage done. And then, yeah, three vehicle spare parts appear here, which the good news was, I was like, well, fair enough, at least I can collect them from here. I don't now have to drive all the way to the crossroads map to, like, the bottom corner of there. However, I had brought a twin steer, and I've got no crane on it. And just for my own kind of shits and giggles, <laughs> enjoying myself, I just wanted to uh, double check. I could still get some cargo on there with a goddamn horse, because you know, he's trained in these things. Um, yeah, well there you go. Looks like it went wrong, but it didn't. It's just readjusting it. A little bit of winch action. It drops on. You see, I can even honk the horn. Make the cargo jump over to the middle of the truck. It's just, it's always a good time with the loaf. But, I didn't want to sit here and try and get all three on there, because it's one of them, it could take another 30 seconds to get the second piece of cargo on, it could take five minutes. I just wanted to get one on, just for my own, <laughs> I don't know, peace of mind, messing around with the uh, goddamn horse. So I ended up getting a uh, dolphin with crane, you can just see in the background. Loaded the other two on, and we're away. Again, at least I can go through the uh, truck repair, fuel, get all that done. And then now I've got to drive uh, north to the Harvest Court Gateway. You see that like a whole winch thing going on on the back of the uh, twin there. If they could just move that out of the way and squeeze a little crane on there, even if worst case, if you had to sacrifice that fourth. Uh, cargo slot. I mean, obviously, in this case, it wouldn't really matter. And yeah, if they adjusted it so we could actually have trailers, especially, like, as much as it drives me mad, the ramped flatbed. Because then we'd be able to have eight pieces of cargo, and I'd be able to do a road train. Be able to get a, a 16 cargo road train on the go. Which I suppose, theoretically, I could with two eight-slot trailers, but let's be honest. One eight slot trailer is a pain in the ass enough, <laughs> let alone two of the bloody things in a road train. It might work on a few maps in a few situations, but not too many. Although to be fair, there is these maps are fairly flat in the scheme of things. Well, yeah, they are, but 
I suppose if you go off road in it gets pretty bumpy. And then it, yeah, from the gateway, kind of driving along the top of the map. There's another goddamn professional just chilling, sunbathing on the beach there. And then yeah, to this little yard section and drop it out, which I assume is eventually going to become the garage. So there is a bridge ahead of me that I've not built yet. It wouldn't make too much difference. The little sort of detour I go round is uh, not the end of the world. But yeah, I suppose I'll have to get around to doing that bridge at some point. Again, even now, I still don't really feel like I'm uh, running out of missions. I'm obviously chipping my way through them. They're not going to last forever, but... Yeah, again, I'm pretty happy with the amount of uh, content and missions and that they gave us on these fa uh, this phase of these maps. most of it, apart from the fact I was supposed to turn right now. <laughs> it's why I usually put the uh, waypoints like, just before the turning, so it clicks onto the next one before I've shot past it. See, that was quite a good example there with a the high gear. It's got a, uh, a good old pace to it. Pretty nice view there, change it back to daytime, that might be a possible thumbnail. And then yeah, once I've done this uh, contract, there's the last one, or not, like the last one for getting the garage, I think it's called fixing the fixers or something. Um, I don't know, a bit anticlimactically, it seems like quite an easy mission, because where the uh, garage where I'm going to get to now, where I'm taking these vehicle spare parts to, uh, you need to deliver two lots of cargo. There's metal beams, and it might have been service spare parts or something, and they're both located at a warehouse that's, like, literally down the road, basically, so it's not going to be a particularly sort of long, difficult mission. Not that I wanted, like, an absolute beast of a mission, but... Yeah, just when I looked at it, it was like, bloody hell, that thing will be over in a uh, a couple of minutes, really. Well, I suppose worst case, I might have to do two trips. I think metal beams, yeah, if it's two metal beams at once, that's going to be four slots of cargo, but even if I uh, use this twin steel, which is already there, I'll uh, be getting that mission done in no time. Which I don't even know how many more <laughs> missions I've got left to do on Harvest Court by the time I uh, unlock the garage. I won't even uh, have a hell of a lot of use for it. Although it's one of them, it always is the way. Like Once I have got a garage on Harvest Corp, I'll naturally be on this map a little bit more. It's another base to start videos from and all the rest of it. So, uh, yeah, any time they've got a garage on maps, it just makes it more accessible. More easier to just do what you're going to do, messing around and all the rest of it. And like I said, once you're actually there, there's a goddamn loaf chilling on the beach. There must have been like four or five loafs on this phase that have been scattered around the map, which I'm not uh, against. I think it's pretty cool. Still, it is an insult to the loaf's reputation to imply that other loafs need rescuing, but we'll overlook that. The loaf deserves a bit of a bit of credit, a bit of mission time. See again on these roads, which they they are still fairly boggy. They're more brutal than like the roads on uh, Michigan and that. This twin set is ticking along pretty nicely. I was wondering what those red things are. I think they're like umbrellas that were just randomly... Although I've got to admit, looking at that view, it's pretty nice. I could definitely picture myself in an inflatable swimming pool on that lake. Snapping oars. Well, not currently with the weather in the UK. Although, to be fair, the whole uh, freezing bollock cold has gone. It's back to, like, above freezing now, which is quite nice. <laughs> I was looking forward to winter. I was actually looking forward to autumn. I like autumn. We didn't really get much of an autumn this year. Kind of went from summer heat wave to bloody freezing cold. But anyway, yeah, this is where I assume the garage will be built. Deliver those three. There's no animations going on yet. Money-wise, 7,000. It's not a lot, really, because uh, 
delivering a loaf the other day. I got about four or five thousand for that. But anyway, like I said, it's another one in the bag, and then one more contract to do here, and I'll uh, yeah, I'll get the garage. But anyway, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's goddamn professional and he saved me bacon again. And I'll be back soon.